The Industrial Revolution started in Britain and took place between the 18th and 19th centuries. It was a period during which predominantly rural societies in Europe and America became industrial and urban. Before the revolution, manufacturing was often done in people's homes using hand tools and basic machines. The revolution marked a shift to powered special purpose machinery factories in mass production. Before the awakening of the Industrial Revolution, people lived in small communities where their daily lives revolved around farming. The growth of the revolution depended on the ability to transport raw materials and finished goods over long distances. The changing of the way things were manufactured had a wide reach. Industries like mining, textile manufacturing, glassmaking, and agriculture all had major changes. For example, the production of textiles went from hand-spun and made of wool to the use of a spinning wheel and a loom and made of cotton. Changes also took place in how goods were produced. Instead of using artisans to produce handmade items, machines started to help improve the process, but it wasn't long until machines took over and the artisans weren't needed. More inventions like the water wheel, which was used to power machinery, and the steam engine would aid in the speeding up of production and manufacturing. Before all these new transportation inventions, people either traveled using animals or by foot. However, there were still many problems with the conditions of the roads. Raw and finished goods were hauled and distributed by horse-drawn wagons or by boats along canals. The closest to trains were horses, which were commonly used to pull freight cars along the rails. Horses were replaced by trains and boats for many things, but not all things. The population of horses actually peaked long after the Industrial Revolution. This is because horses were still used to plow fields, haul wagons and carriages over short distances, pulled boats on the canals, and they toiled in the pits. They also would carry armies into battle. However, when the internal combustion engine was invented in the late 19th century, these workers were rapidly decreased. The three main types of transportation that improved during the revolution were waterways, roads, and railroads. In the 1700s, a series of inventions increased productivity of products while reserving human energy. In 1712, Englishman Thomas Newcomen developed the first practical steam engine, which was first used to pump water out of mines. In the 1770s, James Watt had improved on Newcomen's work, and the steam engine went on to power machinery, locomotives, and ships. In the early 1800s, Robert Fulton built the first commercially successful steamboat and by the mid-19th century, steamships were carrying freight across the Atlantic. As the steam-powered ships were making their debut, the steam locomotive was also coming into use. In 1787, John Finch demonstrated the first steamboat, which had 12 paddles and was propelled by a steam engine. Countless people attempted to improve steamboats so that they could carry passengers and cargo. By purchasing a steam engine built by James Watt, Robert Fulton was able to use the engine to power a 113-foot steamboat, the Clermont. By the 1830s, steamboats were the convention. They were used as methods of transportation in canals and other navigable waterways, and they were used to promote trade. But steamboats' travel time and shipping rates dropped dramatically compared to overland transportation. By 1830, more than 200 steamboats ran up and down the rivers. The development of the railroads was one of the most important phenomenon of the Industrial Revolution. This was because Richard Trevithick constructed the first railway steam locomotives and by 1850, Britain had had more than 6,000 miles of railroad tracks. Americans who had visited England to see the steam locomotives were impressed. They were impressed because railroads dropped the cost of shipping by 60-70%. to 70 percent. Although the first railroads were successful, Attempts to finance new ones failed. This was because in the beginning, people were against building railroads, and opposition was mounted by turnpike operators, canal companies, stagecoach companies, and those who drove wagons.
people were against the railroad because it interfered with their businesses, and they felt threatened. However, in the end, skeptics were won over because of all the economic benefits that came along with building railroads. Railroads could transport materials faster, which helped factories produce goods. This, in turn, helped many businesses grow, and it allowed people from the country to move into the city. People moving to the city provided a workforce for the factories. The building of railroads led to lumber and steel industries to grow larger. Railroads could deliver supplies quickly and fairly inexpensively. This was very important for people living in small towns because they could get all the goods they needed. More and more jobs were created with the building of the railroads themselves and the jobs needed to produce more products to get transported. Before the Industrial Revolution, there were very few roads, and even then they were in bad conditions. In 1820, engineer John McAdam developed a new process for road construction. His techniques, which became known as Macadam, resulted in roads that were smoother, more durable, and less muddy. Macadam consisted of crushed rocks in thin layers. Thomas Telford made new foundations and roads with large, flat stones. Turnpikes were also created for easier transportation. With these inventions, roads even across America improved. All of the improvements on waterways, roads, and railroads all made traveling easier and safer, and it allowed goods to be moved more efficiently. Macadam is broken stone of even size used in successfully compacted layers for servicing roads and paths, and are typically bound with tar or bituum. Roads were the most logical place for early improvement in transportation. They were constructed and maintained by local and state governments or by private investors who had made profit by collecting money from people who wanted to use the road. Turnpikes got their name from the first private road that had a series of spikes that the toll collector would move aside once the driver had paid. However, turnpikes were slow and uncomfortable for passengers and didn't work well for shipping large quantities of goods. transportation methods proved to benefit everyone. Goods could now be transported faster and cheaper. Water was the cheapest way to move heavy products, such as coal and iron, and in order to accommodate all of these new ships, canals were widened and deepened to allow more boats to pass. Water may have been the cheapest way to move supplies, but trains were the cheapest way to move people. Trains were very important when it came to migrating people especially in America when during this time many people were moving out west. The Industrial Revolution brought not only advances in transportation but also in technology, science, agriculture, and construction. Britain's economy boomed during this time, making it a very wealthy country. The Industrial Revolution opened a new door for opportunity and the advancements made in this time are what made our trains, boats, cars, and roads what they are today. The Industrial Revolution changed so many things. It was responsible for urbanization, increase in world trade, the beginning of global warming, new methods of small nations to dominate the world, availability of knowledge through mass production of books, reduction of religious influence through scientific knowledge, and it would prove to be a period of time that would impact the world forever.